All right, and we are live. Welcome everybody to our second ever PegNet weekly update here. I'm Katie Z. I am the founder and CEO of Space Made Media, which is a public relations and blockchain agency. And David, I'll pass it off to you to introduce yourself. Hey guys, David Johnston, uh, crypto guy, PegNet enthusiast, uh, community member of Ethereum, all those wonderful hats. <laughs> awesome. Um, David, do you want to give an update to the community um, for those who are newly um, queued in on PegNet on what is PegNet? How should they be thinking about this? Sure. Um, PegNet is the first decentralized and mineable stable coins. So proof of work mining and you can do stable coins back uh, pegged to the gold price, to the dollar price, to really the top 30 fiat currencies and cryptos worldwide. So yeah, it's a cool project. Uh, been with the community since the beginning and yeah, excited about it. Yeah, for sure. Um, a couple of things to add to that is uh, if you are new to PegDet, uh, it mirrors in a lot of ways the properties of Bitcoin. So it's been fair start mining, proof of work mining since the Genesis block. So no ICO, no IEO, uh, founders reward, airdrops, any of that stuff. Um, it's also a, a stablecoin network where the stablecoins in that network, like USD, the Euro, um, gold, silver, and, and other assets there, they are not collateralized. So there's no collateralized uh, backed uh, issues to contend with. And there's also um, no reserve based issues. And David, I'm sure you'll be able to speak a little bit more to the technical on how that is, but um, just some key points I want everybody to be aware of and how this is going on in the industry. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's the whole industry started with reserve based stable coins like Tether, you know, and obviously we've seen problems with uh, that and other reserve based coins where you have to trust a central party. Um, then we had collateral based, but the collateral goes up and down. So you end up paying stability fees. So those are sort of the two big challenges that the industry has had. And so instead of having Oracle based uh, stable coins that reference the market price, let's say of gold, you resolve the uh, reserve problem. You don't need a custodian holding the gold and you don't have a reserve problem where you have ETH going up and down, right? So it's a pretty novel approach. It was invented by Paul Snow, but it's a community driven project with people mining it all over the world. So yeah, it's exciting. And, you know, um, people I think are gonna get to know what PegNet is and, you know, uh, we can kind of jump into what's going on and and what's exciting and how it's progressing this week. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So this uh, project has me super excited as well. It's completely open source and decentralized. And with that said, I definitely wanna put a call to action out there as we are live, we're on the main net, but we are early days right now. So it's all 100% community driven and the community response has been phenomenal. Um, so if you are a dev or content writer or graphic designer or just want to be involved and help spread the gospel or we have meetup chapters from around the world if you're interested in hosting a meetup um, definitely get in touch uh, at pegnet.org slash chat that'll bring you to the discord channel and um, i'll post the link in the video below but um, you know, i just want to put that out there that if you're interested um, would love to have you part of the community so David, do you want to um, give an update on some of the progress or the dev where we're at with that right now? Sure. I mean, one of the big metrics is how many miners are in the system. Uh, so we've seen the first uh, hash rate spikes now above 200 million hash per second. It's really cool to see. Uh, it seems like the average is about 130, 150 million hash per second, which is a huge amount of growth. You know, the Genesis block was 5 million hash per second. So we've come like 10, 15, almost 20 times uh, the growth rate from the, initial, uh, from the initial block. So it's been really awesome to see that organic community coming up and growing globally that want to do the proof of work, secure the network, and uh, as a result, you know, produce these uh, coins in the system. So yeah, you can see right there on the screen, 154 million, the latest hash rate. 
you know, you can see the growth that we've seen the last uh, few weeks, which is really phenomenal. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, there's only two ways into the system. Either you're burning electricity and mining uh, peg, or you're converting factoids. So you can see people have converted 74,000 factoids into the system. So that's a huge uh, milestone for the factum protocol and sort of really fundamentally changes the token economics where people now have a reason and a way to move value into the system. Yeah, for sure. Let's um, let's move over to another great resource that the community should definitely bookmark. So factoshi.io slash pegnet. You can bookmark that, see the overall health of the mining community um, that's involved in the network and the activity there. And then the other one that you should be bookmarking is pegnetmarketcap.com. Um, and David, I think it'll be important to highlight and just keep reiterating to those who are new to this pegnet network of why pegnet market cap is important um, for a more accurate view of the network versus say coin market cap or coin gecko sure um so this kind of shows you one by one all of the different stable coins in the network right uh pegged gold you can see there is very popular uh pegged ethereum pegged factoids pegged dollars bitcoin of course bitcoin cash Raven coin. So we've got all these top assets and they're all referring to the market price that the miners find on the open market APIs. So yeah, that's a really great representation of sort of where the market's at and uh, shows you this is the volume of value that's flown into the system. So it's pretty cool. I mean, within a few weeks, we've achieved the level of adoption that the Lightning Network took about six months to achieve. So yeah, no, it's uh, exciting to see that progress and sort of quick adoption. Yeah, that's great. The, the other um, resource while we're on here for the update, um, just to give you guys a frame of reference is pegnet.org. So if you are interested in mining, um, you can go here and click to the miners. They'll bring you down to the bottom and get your mining guide and get started on the network there. I believe we will have mining pools available soon as well. Um, so all of the need to know is here at pegnet.org as well. Awesome. Yeah, no, the community has been pretty cool to build all these resources and launch them to make it easy to see what's going on with the prices or the hash rate or anything else. So. Yeah, definitely. Um, so that pretty much wraps up the update that we have. Um, just want to make this quick, short, to the point, give an update on the progress, the health, where we need help and um, different things like that to keep the growth going. Um, we do have a question from Kennedy. It was mentioned on Discord that mining pools have started. Can someone fill in details regarding that subject? Sure. Um, so the mining pools that exist right now are private mining pools. So it's best to reach out to some of the people on Discord about getting an invitation to those private mining pools. But yeah, um, I'm putting one of those together. And so people can hit me up. David Johnston on Discord, not hard to find. Um, there be, one's being run by other folks. So um, it's, it's important to have a mining pool because as the hash rate continues to grow, it'll be harder for smaller miners to get uh, consistent payouts if they're mining alone, right? So if they only have one thousandth, one thousandth of the hash rate, they might win a block pretty rarely, right? A thousand blocks would be like five or six days, right? It's 144 blocks a day, right? So, you know, that's, that's kind of tough for people to get those lumpy payouts. So if you join a pool, then you can get a very consistent, smooth payout based on winning blocks as a proportion of your hash rate compared to the pool, right? So if you end up being 10% of the pool, then you're gonna get 10% of the payouts, but it's much more smooth and consistent. So yeah, that's an important piece of infrastructure that every community needs. And so I'm happy that we have mining pools now. A lot of them are in testing, but they're live on production mainnet. So if you want to join out, uh, join up one of the early pools, uh, just send me a message on Discord and that's probably the easiest way to do it. Very cool. So unless we have any other questions, I think we're gonna close this out and wrap it up. Uh, final remarks for us, David? Well, Goodbye from beautiful Barbados International Airport. I'll see you guys next week.
All right. Cheers, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Yeah.